Have you ever thought of the true meaning of bravery? Resilience? What about beauty? Can you relate to the utter thought of losing it all? Close your eyes now and listen to these again. Bravery, resilience, beauty. Now I want you to open your eyes and continue to think of these words. Last semester, during my current master's program in occupational psychology, our career, our career advisor asked us to complete several personality and character tests. In a one-on-one -on -one session with him, he reviewed my results, and he asked me what I thought of these. And he also wondered why bravery was so high on the list. So I thought for a while, and I said, well, I guess I'm just brave, you know? Even if I don't want to do something, I just muster up enough confidence and just get it on with. But after the session, that question resonated with me. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the society that I had lived in and the socialization that I underwent had shaped the strongest attributes of myself and then had influenced my behavior and character. But how I arrived at this conclusion was a long process of self-reflection. Let me share this story with you. Montserrat, known as the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean, is a small Leeward island about 39 square miles, located south of Antigua and north of Guadeloupe. This island is a true hidden gem, with lush mountain terrains, wildlife, coral reefs, and much more. So why hidden, you now wonder? Well, people are yet to discover it, to embrace themselves in what it has to offer. True tranquility, the lowest crime rates, and well, some of the friendliest people you'd ever meet, including myself. This island, I am proud to call my home. But this island was once battered, bruised, and left hanging on for their life by the onslaught of a Sophia Hills volcano. In 1995, this silent volcano, or so they thought, awoke with such a fury. It seemed to have a mission, destruction. This, this was a shocker. Paraclastic flows, lava, ash decimated two thirds of the southern part of the island, leaving it uninhabitable and forcing approximately 7,000 of the just 12,000 population to migrate to neighboring islands and to the United Kingdom. Memories of the life of Plymouth, the capital of Montserrat, are now deeply ingrained in the minds of Montserratians and those who once knew it as it once was. Now, all that's left is a few roofs of buildings protruding through the unrelenting, strangulating graveyard of volcanic ash. Take a look at what I'm speaking about. So these are just a few clips of before, because it's really hard to get some. And that's like the seaport and aerial view. And then let me share, share a video with you. Moments later, the regenerated dome collapses. Um, signal is still continuing, still saturated, possible um, flow, heavy flow again. Observatory standing by. John Shepard and Mark Staziuk take to the air to witness the event. Just a few hundred yards from where we were standing, pyroclastic flows decimate the mountainside. Hundreds of degrees in temperature, this flow will incinerate and crush anything in its path. Okay, so these are pictures of uh, the aftermath. So that's the plummet of ash that used to come over us. And as you can see, just a few buildings protruding through afterwards. Everything was decimated in the two thirds of the island. Okay? But when you look at these pictures, now tell me, 
Can you really think about the thought of losing it all now? Bravery. I remember my mother running around, driving as fast as she could to get us to safety on several occasions before the plummets of ash were over us. I was terrified and she would say, as mothers would do, don't worry, you know, it's going to be okay. But I was terrified. And when I looked at her, I realized she just had to be brave for me. And she would be tirelessly cleaning inside and outside the house to make sure that my health was secure as I was asthmatic. And I would be peeping through the windows looking at our neighbors as they tirelessly cleaned and shuffled the ash with ash masks on. And I would think to myself now, wow, these people are really brave. But they didn't just have to be brave for themselves. They knew that others needed them. And so they had to be brave for their family, friends, and loved ones. They couldn't just let fear consume them with negative thoughts and then break down. They had to try and be as brave as they could. And as I grew older, the less afraid of the volcano I became. It just became now a way of life. And sometimes when people meet me for the first time and I tell them where I come from, they can't even begin to think of living with a volcano. Have you ever been put in such a situation? Like you would see someone going through something that you can't even imagine going through yourself. Whether it's like in a novel, a movie, or even in real life. And then you start to reflect and you're like, wow, those people are really brave. And then you now try to become and be brave just like that? Well, yeah, that's me too. Seeing the courage of my mother and my fellow islanders made me so proud, made me so brave that the mindset is it doesn't matter how many fear, like fear, fear of, I don't know how to put it. So many different things might come my way. So many events might seem like so negative, but seeing the courage of them has really just instilled me to try and be brave no matter what. And I just want to know, you to know that even when it feels in your life like a volcano is exploding around you and you're trapped, be brave and find solutions. Resilience. And on an island so small, with a large disaster, you would think that this was it for the island. But that's not what happened. Those who stayed showed immense signs of bravery and resilience. As Caribbean people would say, they had a backbone. They felt strong. And so, we started to redevelop. But guess what? 23 years later, and we are still redeveloping. We are now starting to redevelop on the northern side of the island. There's a new seaport. There's a new seaport. There's sports complex, which hosts basketball, netball, volleyball, and also a cultural center that hosts social events and weddings. When I reflect on how long the process has taken for redevelopment, I now understand that success doesn't happen overnight. Success isn't just happened by choice, by chance. It's a choice. And I can't just sit down and think, OK, I want to be successful, and it's going to happen. I have to get out there and achieve it myself. But sometimes, yes, in self-doubt, there's a quote that I want to share with you. And it says, an arrow can only be shot, back, shot by pulling it backwards. So when you feel like life is dragging you back with difficulties, that means it's going to launch you into something great. So just stay focused and keep aiming. Brave beauty. And in the midst to try and regain our redevelopment, we try to retain our cultural identity. Anyone can think why? Let me tell you. Because beauty lies within your identity. And everything that I have been through has molded me into who I am today. 
and will continue to mold me into who I will become in the future. So I try not to let where I come from make me blind. I love my small little 39 square miles island with a volcano because that's unique and that's what truly makes me beautiful. But beauty doesn't also lie within the culture. We also have some of the beautiful beaches. And yes, I know you would say, everywhere has beaches, but we are home to some black sand beaches that glisten in the sun. And you know who we have to thank for that? The Sufia Hills Volcano. And I highlight this to say that even though the volcano seems to be a negative impact to the island, it makes it unique, it makes it beautiful. And if it wasn't for that, then the tourists wouldn't want to come and say, oh, let's see what black sand beaches are like, you know? And then I transcend that into my life and I'm like, when persons say negative things about us or about you, and instead of dwelling on those things or actually starting to believe, oh wait, I didn't get a high on this mark, I didn't get high on this exam, or I didn't do something well, instead of dwelling on just those negative things that people see, you know that within you lies beauty. And once you embrace that and let that shine through, then you will be successful. So even though the volcano brought a lot of havoc, I am thankful. For it has taught me to be brave and keep my head on as my father's favorite line to me. Be resilient, making sure even though I have setbacks, I stay optimistic. I learn from them and find ways to improve myself. And in the worst situations, try to find beauty within them. And I hope that everything that I asked you to close your eyes about in the beginning is all now coming together. Bravery, resilience, and beauty. Because I just want to say that you are the ones that are either going to be brave or run away from challenges when they come. You are the ones that are going to either believe all the negative things or let the setbacks bring you down or believe within yourself and let that beauty shine through. Now you received some cards before the, the um, talk. I'd like you to take those out and think just for a few seconds. Think about something that defines you or some a strong characteristic you might think about yourself. And I just want you to write that down. Anything at all. Anything at all you like about yourself, anything you think is the best thing about you, or something that you find unique about you. It could be your background, anything at all. And I want whatever you write down, I want you to hold on to this. And when toxic ash feels like it wants to come and steal your beauty, I want you to be brave, be resilient, and let that unique thing that you've just written down shine through. Now say with me, I am brave, I am resilient, I have beauty, Thank you.